Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. Like other almanacs, our aim is to tell you a little bit about our past, our present, and events in the near future. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Rob Brownlee Tommaso was advised to go to school to be trained for his day job and keep his fine art as a side interest. So he studied graphic design at Glassboro State College, now called Rowan University, in southern New Jersey. After many years working for agencies and freelancing, he is now putting his primary focus on large dramatic paintings on unusually shaped canvases. He treats his subject matter to a graphic sensibility with black outlines and a high contrast sense of color with many layers and uncommon ingredients. Kind of getting a little bit away from the art instruction is one of the reasons why my work has gone the direction it has. So not not saying that art instruction is bad, but for me, I think that I, hopefully, I got the right amount and then I went off on my own. I enjoyed putting texture into paintings, and I was trying to figure out the best way to put texture. And at first it was heavy application of paint, then it was building up gesso, and I finally discovered acrylic medium, which is a great way to adhere sand and dirt to canvases. So I started doing that, and it started becoming, it kind of worked itself out. I would collect earth from the subject matter that inspired me. So I did a you know, I've done, me you know, good at, went to Italy several, probably nine years ago, ten years ago, and s- sketching and taking pictures and inspired by the Pantheon, well, let's collect dirt from around where the Pantheon is, take it home, mix it into the canvas, so that started becoming what I did most of the time, and lately that's how it's progressed, the places I go and places I visit, I take pictures, I do sketches, and then I collect dirt, and there's all kinds of bottles of earth all over my studio from all the different places I've gone but you can see the color of the soil so that also helps with the palette if I I already know what it's going to be like um, as far as the palette goes when I'm looking at the dirt I can see how dark it is how light it is how muddy it is if it's sandy sometimes have little sparkly mica in them or things like that so it really almost gives the work its own direction just from the start I really like using the uh, dark outlines kind of a stark contrast. A lot of times when I use heavy um, textures, I need to contrast that or make the subject matter stand out more, so I'll do heavy black lines. And one of the things that I've started doing with the layering aspect to make things more interesting is riveting, putting separate pieces of canvas, some mixed media kind of things, screws and bolts. And then in the past year or so, I've been incorporating branches into the paintings where actually one of the sides or two of the sides of the the canvas will actually be a branch that I've, you know, that I procured from the place that inspired me. One of the things that um, people mention about my work is my canvases aren't usually rectangular. Um, I'll use different angles and sometimes five sides instead of four sides and they'll be strange angles and I know I I just I just think it makes, makes it more interesting and a lot of times I'll work out my sketchbook and I'll decide what the composition is after I get my subject matter, I'll just draw the shape of the frame around and try to figure out the best way to use the composition that way. So it ends up having a lot of weird shaped frames on my canvases. Rob is considering doing a series on cars after recently visiting Daytona Beach and collecting a gallon of sand there. But he and his wife enjoy hiking and birding, so what he sees and finds on the trail continues to inspire his work. I think... I'm thinking of switching gears, but there was a couple of really neat bird sightings that I had that I'd like to... We saw a hooded warbler at um, Cypress Swamp uh, down near Solomon's. So I have a branch that I collected from there, and I have some sketches of that. So I'd like to do my hooded warbler at some point. Um, but there's... I can always go back to the birds. The birds are so much fun to do. It's so rewarding, and there might be a little bit of a direct, different direction they might take on the birds. But um, I think I'll probably, you know, being into birding, and I'm not the greatest birder. I, you know, I'm usually thinking about the dirt that I'm picking up off the trail more than, you know, what kind of bird is that. But I think I'll always do birds to a certain extent, and the styles will change. I did a series of the Birds and Trees paintings that was inspired by Adkins Arboretum in Ridgely, and I did, I think I did 
12 of those canvases, and I've sold several of them. So those were really fun to do, and that's kind of why I got back into doing bird paintings. And my newer bird paintings are a little bit more realistic. So I'm trying to think of what direction to go when I, when I eventually get back to doing birds. I might change the style of the subject matter a little bit. Rob says that most of his creative process begins simply with pencil and paper. Well, I'm, I'm big into the sketchbook. Pencil sketching, you know, for me is everything. But generally, I don't refine over and over and over again. I, I usually, when I build the sketch in the sketchbook, I can usually only do it once and then the painting comes out of it. And that's, I'd say, 99% of my stuff. I just do the sketch once in the sketchbook. And if I like it, it becomes a painting. If I don't, I just turn the page and do something different. But, you know, this the sketchbook is, is really an important part of the process because it keeps your creative mind going. Yeah, I think if, if you can draw well with a pencil in, in your sketchbook, you can do anything as far as art goes. So to me, that's, that's the basic, most key skill to have is being able to sketch. For me, it's easy to be inspired and to have subject, subject matter. I have more ideas than I have time to paint them. So it's a nice problem to have. You know, and I have, I have dirt from really cool places that I don't know if I'm ever gonna make a painting out of. So I'll sit down and work in the sketchbook and when I find something that really clicks and it's like, okay, this is gonna be a good painting, then I'll, I'll go ahead and, and, and do it. I think an artist, if you're inspired and you're really motivated, you can work almost under any kind of circumstances can figure out how to make it make it work. Rob has work at the Ouvert Gallery in St. Michael's and participates in the resident artist program at Anne Marie Gardens on Solomon Island. You can also see his paintings at Turnbridge Point Bed and Breakfast and the Foundry, both in Denton. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters, eatdrinkbyart.com, for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune.